I know what it's like to be completely overwhelmed and confused by all the different choices of wood finishes. Polyurethane or lacquer, wipe on or spray on, and what the heck is tongue oil? I'm Jen Woodhouse from the House of Wood, and today I'm working with Watco, and we're talking about the most common wood finishes, the differences between them, and how to choose the right product for your project. Clear finishes help protect the wood against damage from moisture, UV rays, and everyday wear and tear, so it not only makes your project more durable, but it brings out the natural beauty of the wood grain. Whichever finish you choose, preparation is key. You can check out the basics of finishing video on my YouTube channel for a closer look on how to prep your project before applying a protective top coat. There are two main types of finishes, layered and oiled. A layered finish lays on top of the wood while an oil finish will penetrate into the wood grain. Polyurethane and lacquer are examples of a layered finish while tongue oil and rejuvenating oil are examples of an oiled finish. One factor to consider when choosing your finish is durability. What is the project type? Is it a dining table where you're going to need maximum protection against spills? Or is it a jewelry box that isn't subjected to moisture or heavy wear and tear? So with that in mind, let's take a closer look at these products by Watco. First we have polyurethane. It's one of the most common finishes, but it can be a little tricky to apply. Most polyurethanes are either brushed or sprayed on, and you need to be very diligent about drips or brush strokes on the surface. This is why I love this wipe on poly. It's a polyurethane that's been thinned down, so it's more forgiving and it's great for detailed wood finishes. And it's so easy to apply. You just wipe it on with a cloth and allow it to dry. And you could build up each layer without having to worry about brush strokes or drips. And it protects against water, stains, general wear and tear, and it comes in gloss or satin sheens. Now, the sheen won't affect its durability, so it's just a matter of preference. Next we have tongue oil. Now this is a finish that penetrates deep into the wood to protect against moisture and it enhances the wood grain and the warmth of the wood. Now it won't provide as much protection as a poly will, but I really love its natural hand rub finish and it doesn't darken over time. You want to reapply it whenever the wood has lost that luster, so depending on your project, this finish may require a little more maintenance. Tongue oil can be used both on bare or stained wood. So you just apply the oil and let it penetrate into the wood for about 15 minutes and then buff it off with a soft cloth. Two light coats are recommended and the gloss level will increase as you add more coats. Watco also has a product called Danish Oil and it's a hybrid blend of oil and poly so you can get the best of both worlds, that natural earthy finish of an oil with the protection of a poly. The Danish Oil hardens within the wood so it provides that hand rub finish that brings out the natural beauty of the wood and it comes in several wood tones like natural, cherry, and dark walnut. Here you can see the difference between the tongue oil and the Danish oil. There's a slight difference in color, but it's more so in sheen. Now let's take a look at this satin wax. You can apply this on top of an oiled finish for that added layer of protection. So if you're looking for that natural hand rub look, but you need a bit more durability, applying this wax is a great alternative to poly. The wax sticks to the surface of the wood and it creates a soft satin luster. It's water resistant, it hides scratches, and you can reapply it whenever you need to. You simply wipe it on with a soft cloth, wait 10 minutes, then buff it off. It can be used on bare, stained, or oiled wood. But something to remember, since this is a wax finish, you cannot top coat this product. Here you can see the difference between the tongue oil and the satin wax. The tongue oil, because I have more coats, it's a bit shinier, but they both have that hand rub finish. Now, if you have an old project that needs a little love, you'll want to use this rejuvenating oil. It's like a moisturizer for old wood, and it's designed to restore oil finishes. It removes surface grime, and it creates a renewed luster and protection. It rejuvenates and restores old wood. You just wipe it on, wait 10 minutes, and then wipe it off. Now, if you apply this over a wax finish, there's no need to strip the wax because the rejuvenating oil will dissolve the wax and remove minor surface scratches. Here you can see how easy this is to use and how this product can beautifully restore worn down surfaces. Another kind of oil finish is this teak oil. It's made for denser woods like teak, mahogany, or rosewood. It penetrates deep into the wood fibers and it provides great protection from UV rays and moisture. It also creates a warmer glow to the wood, which a lot of people like. I personally prefer a finish that doesn't alter the natural tone of the wood, so I tend to use a finish that's crystal clear. To apply it, you would shake the can, then flood it onto the surface and allow the wood to absorb all of the oil. 
Add more where the wood absorbs all of the oil and then allow it to penetrate for another 15 minutes before wiping it off. Now here's a finish that's especially great for outdoor projects like decks and fences. You can use this exterior wood finish on new, old, or pressure treated wood and it creates a UV, moisture, and mildew resistant finish. It won't chip or peel away and it reduces warping and swelling in the wood caused by temperature changes. You'll want to make sure that the wood is dry and any kind of existing finish like paint or varnish is completely removed before applying this finish. So you're going to want to mix the container really well, then apply the finish with a brush, cloth, roller, or a spray. Then allow it to penetrate for about 30 minutes, reapply, then wait another 15 minutes, then wipe it off the surface completely. Now it'll be ready to use in about 8 to 10 hours. Finally, let's take a closer look at lacquer. Lacquer is a layered finish like polyurethane, and you could either spray or brush it on. But unlike polyurethane, you don't have to sand in between each layer because each coat fuses to the one below it to provide the best protection. Lacquer creates a durable, scratch-resistant finish, and it's available in gloss, semi-gloss, satin, and matte sheets. It tends to have a pretty strong odor, though, so you want to wear a respirator to block out those harmful fumes. Now for the spray on lacquer, you just shake the can for a couple of minutes, then you spray on a light coat. Be careful not to spray too heavy of a coat because it'll run or drip. It's better to spray on several light coats rather than one heavy coat, and it'll dry to the touch in about 30 minutes. Once the previous coat dries completely and it feels hard, then you can apply the next coat. Three coats are recommended for this, and you want to allow to dry for 24 hours before you use your project. Now for the brush on lacquer, use a good quality brush to apply. You want to stir the can, don't shake it because you'll create bubbles. You also want to avoid using a foam roller or over brushing because it'll cause bubbles in your finish. Apply the first coat, then let it dry for two hours before recoating. Three coats are also recommended and it'll fully harden and cure in a week. This wood was finished with a lacquer and this one with a polyurethane. Now, there isn't much difference between the two as far as the look goes, but I'd opt for the lacquer finish simply because it's just as easy to apply, but it dries a lot quicker and it's more durable. I hope this video helped you understand more about these different finishes and what they do so you know exactly which product to use for your next project. If you want to see more DIY projects and ideas, visit jenwoodhouse.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.